this video I will be testing water-soluble wax crayons. I will be drawing and painting with them. The brand I have is Lyra. It's from Germany. It's called Aqua Color. Other brands have similar wax crayons as well. I know Dervent has some. The easiest way to test a new material for me is to paint something with it. I have this photo of some tulips in a crystal bowl. I sketched them out with a pencil on a sheet of watercolor paper. This is 50% cotton paper that I use for practice for my experiments. And then I started sketching with these crayons just on a dry sheet of paper, applying different colors that I see in the reference photo. I applied some pinks and some purples for the petals. I applied yellow with some light blue for the leaves and stems. I'm thinking once I activate them with water, they will mix and create a green. I also use some greens that I have in the set here. I kind of hinted at the design that I see in the glass bowl. It's pretty complicated object to paint, but I thought with wax crayons, I can kind of draw with different colors before I paint and it will make my task a little bit easier. I also applied some dark blues on the background and here I kind of started noticing the first problem with this material. It seems like it has a lot of bright saturated colors, very beautiful, but it doesn't have that many darks. It has pretty big neutral color section. You can barely see there on the right. It has some black and gray, quite a few browns, but in the primary and secondary color section that I usually use for my watercolor paintings, most of the colors are pretty light. There were not that many intense saturated darker colors. When I paint, I like to have a lot of purples, some neutral blues, and, and some cool greens. If you watch my videos, you know that I use those to create neutrals and dark colors. So here is some clean water. I have a watercolor brush, and I'm going to try softening all those crayons that I applied with some water to blend them and to create more or less realistic painting of these tulips. Before I started working on this larger sheet of paper, I tested these crayons on little pieces of scrap paper, and I thought Again, the colors were very beautiful, very bright, but not dark. So I'm thinking I'll have to do something to add darks to my painting. But for now, I'm just working straight with these crayons. I have to say this is probably the largest set of water-soluble wax crayons that I've seen. Usually they include just a few colors, but here we have a pretty good gradation of all the primary and secondary colors. And also, as I mentioned, quite a few neutrals. This is the main problem when working with liner tools like markers or color pencils, all kinds of um, pastels, is to have enough colors because they are hard or impossible to mix. So this is my indigo blue, which is probably one of the darkest colors besides black that I have in this set. And I also have a purple. It's more of a violet, so I'm hoping to create some darker passages in the vase. With these two, there's also pretty nice dark green. Again, not super dark, but I am building tone with these. And I notice also that they go nice and smooth and a lot more saturated if you apply them on a wet surface. So you will see further in this video what I started doing to get rid of some of the texture and to apply them more smoothly right away. When working with um, crayons or pencils, I tend to grab a whole bunch of them and hold them in my left hand until I can't hold them anymore. So then I put them on the desk where I can actually see them. I kind of forget that I have them in my hand sometimes. This was my first experiment. I took a photo so you can see it a little bit better with some color correction. I would say it looked like a quick sketch, like a quick study, which is probably not a bad thing. But I wanted to continue my experiments and figure out how to create those darker passages with these crayons. Next thing I tried, I did a tonal drawing, used a different reference photo, but still tulips in a crystal vase. These have been my subject recently for several paintings. Hopefully you saw my previous demonstration where I painted tulips in a crystal vase with core watercolors. So for this 
second sketch I decided to start with several shades of gray and with black and to create a tonal underpainting first. These crayons are very portable and they're fairly versatile because you can draw with them but you can also get some smoother color washes out of them with just clean water. You can use a water brush. So I thought if I'm on location somewhere maybe I would want to bring these just for tonal studies. Another thing I started doing with this is dipping them in clean water and drawing with them to make them go on smoother. I tried applying them to wet paper, but paper dries very quickly. So this was a way to apply them more smoothly with less texture. Using black in this set, I saw the same thing that I see with black watercolor pigments. The grays were cool. They had a lot of blue in them but the black was warmer. Now that I'm adding water to the drawing I think you can see how warm it is. You probably can see the grays very well but the black is fairly warm and I painted the background with it and that background is coming forward. I can't push it back so I will need to do something to modify the temperature of that color. Let's continue and see what else we can do. As my next step, I decided to add color to my tonal sketch and see what happens. These wax crayons are very soft and they're highly pigmented. I want to mention I used other brands. The other one I used was Dervent and when I tried drawing with them on a wet surface, they would slide very easily. These ones, Lyra Aquacolor, are a lot easier to control and in general I'm pleased with the way my tonal sketch turned out. I was able to do it very quickly and I would say to fairly accurately capture the tonal relationships in the still life. Mm. color again with the crayons as you see, some yellows, oranges and reds on the tulips, some light green on the leaves, maybe a little bit of green on the background as well to balance it out. There's a very interesting cast shadow. There are some yellow designs on the tablecloth and this is what I was able to accomplish with these crayons only. In my opinion adding black did not really solve the problem of not having enough darks in this set. The black is fairly warm it worked for just a tonal sketch, but with lighter colors, I am not really happy with the result. And you can let me know in comments what you think about the sketch. Let's continue. I decided that maybe to increase the tonal range in my sketch, I can do something else to it. Maybe I can add some watercolor. First of all, I wanted to unify all those scribbles that I did with the crayons, smooth out the texture a little bit more, add a little more gradation to the shadows. When I drag pigment around, it's kind of hard to control. It's a lot easier for me to paint shadows with watercolor and also maybe add a little more intensity to some areas like the leaves and definitely to the flowers. As you see in the photo, the flowers are really shining. They're so bright and filled with that sunlight. So I wanted to have that in my painting as well. So I'm adding a little bit of Pyrrole Scarlet. The last thing I needed to do to this sketch was to restore the highlights. The set has a white crayon, but of course it's fairly transparent. It did work more for kind of smoothing and blending other colors, lightening them, but I couldn't do the highlights with it. It was too transparent for highlights, especially on darker areas where I applied that black crayon, white would not cover it. So I just grabbed some white gouache and added back the highlights. That's the way I usually do it. And here is the second sketch, my second experiment. My third attempt was a little bit different. I decided to first paint with watercolor to do kind of underpainting before I switch to these crayons. I do like that they give me some interesting texture that I can draw with them. They're easy to control, but using them alone just doesn't seem to give me enough coverage. I can still see the white paper. It may be that other artists use them alone more successfully. Maybe you use them alone or somehow differently. This is what I decided to do. I did an underpainting with watercolor. This is what it looked like. I let it dry. It was fairly light as you see. Then I took the crayons 
and I started drawing on top, adding more saturation, more details, and more color variation. I don't want to make this video super long, so I will post this full demonstration of this third sketch as a separate video next week on Wednesday, one of the days that I publish videos on my channel, and you will be able to see all the details, all the steps, how I painted this. I'll just mention here that I added another layer of watercolor after I was done drawing with the crayons, and I added highlights with white ink. Here is what I got in the end. Overall, I would say water-soluble wax crayons are a very interesting material to try. They are great by themselves for quick sketches, maybe on location. They're portable, easy to carry with you or even in the studio to just put down some colors for future reference. But for more finished artwork, I would use them in combination with watercolor. I think I will continue my experiments in that direction. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamara studios channel.